Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Holodrack's destination for bike rack carrier here today on the back of our 2020 Tesla Model Y. Now guys, it's gonna be a very nice way of giving yourself a lot of bikes on the back of your vehicle to go ahead and get them in a nice stable platform to that destination of your choice. Now I will say it does look a little busy body. There's a lot going on. It's not the cleanest looking bike rack out there, of course, but I think you guys will become a bigger fan of it once you realize how well of a job it does of holding on your bikes. This is a great family option, gives you a lot of capability of getting your bikes to wherever you want to go. Of course, it's kind of hard to beat a four bike rack plat a four bike rack platform, especially for the cost the destination is. So I really do like to see how well this guy works for ourselves. So these cradles, very, very simple. You can see not the largest guys out there widening out <clears throat> your shortest about three inches, widening out to about four almost there to the back end. And these strips themselves, quite large actually for what they are, which I do like to see. And then also they have this little eyelet in here, makes it really easy to cinch that down. And of course you got a little rubber uh, on the inside here to go ahead and prevent any damage to your wheel rims. This guy also can be transposed here. All you got to do, undo that guy all the way by going lefty loosey, of course. And you guys can see you can get them in these two positions here. So you don't get that much movement out of it, but it is just a little bit of versatility. And that can go a long way of making sure that you get all the bikes you want up on here. Now talking about that though, you do have a 35 pound capacity limit per bike. That's going to allow you to get most of your standard and even up to those mountain bike ranges of bikes on here. The one thing I will say though, we do have frame contact. So if you're looking for a way of getting your carbon frame bikes to that destination for yourself, unfortunately, this will not be the guy to do it. There are a lot of other carrier options out there that are going to offer you more like wheel mounts. Those are a great one to go ahead and start looking at <clears throat> if you are wanting that um, for your carbon freight bikes. But for most of us, a lot of us with those families, probably not going to have those really, really expensive bikes. So this is still going to do a great job, like we said, for your more lightweight options. For this guy too, does have this little frame option. So like we said, that carbon frame, one thing to look out for. However, sometimes with frame options, you have an issue with uh, women's bikes, step through bikes, kids bikes. With this guy, we're not gonna really have that issue. You can see this mass can go all the way up and down here and it has 360 degrees of revolution available. So we're gonna be A-OK -okay with those vertical, with those horizontal and even those diagonal, as you can see here today. Gonna have no trouble getting a variety of bikes on here. And that's one thing that becomes awesome about this. Again, your family's gonna have different needs, right? And also maybe you're bringing some other friends along too. They're gonna have different needs and they're gonna have no trouble actually changing those guys around in no time, which becomes awesome for yourself. Well, we can go ahead and hop this guy off. Unfortunately, I think the one, big failing maybe of this guy is it can't tilt away. So that's kind of the only thing that stinks. You can see we won't actually be able to remove this with our front bike up on here. Now, if we did only have the two, maybe we could pull this one off. Um, while you're at your destination, could probably access this while the rest are still on there. Now you may be tempted to go ahead, leave this bike open or this slot open and shift it down the line for when you're not fully utilizing them. However, they always recommend keeping your bikes closer to the hitch. You're gonna put a lot of shear force on your bike rack if you don't, so that can actually be a problem. So don't try to get too cheeky with it. Just understand that it is kind of one of the caveats of having the destination. But we can go ahead and pop the bike off because it doesn't take too much time to do that. We just have a little lever that I'm pushing in allowing myself to take out that strip just like so. We can go ahead and set that to the side. Doing the same on our front wheel, of course. And that does bring us to our last hold here today on our bike, <clears throat> which is gonna be right in the middle. One thing I like to do, take your extra arm, hold your frame in, and then let that guy actually be what's hitting that lever. That way you have a good hold on your bike so it was, doesn't want to tilt into the vehicle or yourself, of course. And then we can gently allow it to kind of tilt away just so we can get that strip out of the way. And then we can grab our bike and walk it off just like so. Now mounting it becomes almost easier in my opinion as you don't have to watch it nearly as much. You do need to watch it though as you're setting up that middle frame, of course, kind of using that same trick with your hand can go a long way of making sure we don't have any damage done to our vehicle. Now, one thing you can also do with this is actually drop this mass down. Now, I think we're gonna be okay if we wanted to open in this position, but just to be safe, well, let's just, we can go ahead and try it here. Let me get in a position where I can drop it if I think we're gonna have issues though. This hatch sometimes swings out wide, as you guys probably know. So I just wanna go ahead and make sure I have the option of getting it out of the way. So we can go ahead and pop them in that hatch. I think we would have a little bit of contact. I think it would have hit right here on that rubber. So probably not gonna do anything damaging to either one, but I would just go ahead, be sure to drop that mast out of the way. That way you don't have any issues. And you guys can just go ahead and bring it down here. What I like to do, take this extra strip, bring it right into position here, 
and go ahead and secure that down. That's going to keep our mask from popping up, of course, which can be awesome. But now with that hatch open, we can go ahead, we can get those coolers, bike helmets, anything else we might need on the inside of our vehicle. Becomes a nice little spot too to go ahead and relax. Not too much room here to maneuver, but you could put your foot up on here, get your shoes changed anytime at all, which can be great for yourself. So we can go ahead and close this guy in no time at all. Now, one thing we do need to keep in mind here is going to be our clearance and the other dimensions we have to keep in mind. So for that guy, we're going to go ahead from the bottom here to the very end of our carrier. Our wings are going to be our lowest dipping point. So we can go ahead and see what that's working with. From the ground to the very end here, puts us right at 20 inches there, guys, to the very end of the carrier. So definitely a lot of height there. Nothing I'm going to be too worried about. Now, we are getting further from that rear axle because we do have four bikes up on this guy. So keep in mind, as those front wheels go up, the back will go down, and so will your hitch-mounted accessories. And you are going to see a little bit more dip because you're so far from that axle. So if you do have any rough terrain, or really uh, steep incline you're going to be approaching, it's just something to keep in mind. On the very end, too, you are seeing these little reflectors. I love pointing those guys out. I don't think they're standard enough across the industry and especially on an all black rack it's nice to let people know exactly where we are so us our friends and our family can get home safe with no accidents another dimension we need to keep in mind though is gonna be the length we're adding to our vehicle now the Model Y not the longest now not the shortest though too so we can go ahead and see exactly what we're working with here from the rear that bumper there to the very end is gonna be putting us about 37 and a half inches extended from the back of our vehicle now 40 inches is nothing really, especially for four bikes. That's awesome to see. And we do have a way of shortening that up for ourselves. To do so, we're gonna come right here to the middle. We have a little retaining clip we need to remove first. Well, normally there's a retaining clip. Looks like somebody's forgotten that here at the shop, but it does sit right there for yourself, guys. It's just a little retaining clip. Make sure that this pin isn't gonna be moving. Now I will say when you have this nice and tightened down in this position, it's not gonna move anyways, which is great, but nice to have that extra added security. And all we have to do, simply unloosen it. That's gonna go ahead and let us pull that out. That safety cord can let it hang there. And then I can walk up my mask. Now I will say you're not gonna go all the way that you might feel. Right here looks to be like a pretty good position. And then you do wanna find this alignment pin here for yourselves, guys. And then we just simply slot that guy like so. And there we go, we can start threading it back into place. That's gonna get us a nice secure fit. One thing I do like about the destination right here, very, very easy to actually get this guy put up. Now, it's not the fastest. There are other carriers out there that do it faster, but I kind of like the control I get. I know that I'm setting it, and as you guys can see, very, very secure in that position. I like that hand knob too. It's large enough that I actually get a good grip, and you can definitely see that it's gonna be holding up well. Even if your hands were cold or wet or something like that, you're still gonna get good purchase. That's one thing I don't really like about knobs is when they feel smooth and you're like, man, I'm really pinching it. Now, it's a pretty good knob, which is, Always nice to see, very easy to use, which is always good. Well, we have shortened down a lot of that length now. We can go ahead from the back of the bumper now to the very end. Looks like our wings are gonna be still our longest point, and that puts us well within 12 inches there. It looks like about 11 and three quarters of an inch, guys. That's awesome. We're staying close and tight to our vehicle. Gonna make this really easy to pull into the garage or at least give ourselves a lot more maneuverability when we wanna park it. I will say in this position too, you are gonna lose a lot of that backup camera and you can see it is gonna be impacting your taillights just a little bit. Now you do have enough emittance here that I think you're gonna be okay. You're not gonna be blocking off a lot of that light and you still have those side ones. And keep in mind, as you guys get four bikes loaded up on here, you're gonna lose all that visibility out of that backup camera. That's just something that's gonna happen with it. It. And one thing to watch out for too, if you have really long bikes, they can start impacting that taillight. However, with us being so far from there, I think people are still gonna be able to see us, still gonna know when we're braking, which is good. And of course, our blinker's gonna be out to the side, so people should be able to see that, no problem. Well guys, we can move our way down to the inside here and start taking a look at our shank. We do have ourselves a two inch shank here today being utilized, of course, by your two-inch hitch. On the inside, though, you are seeing a threaded anti-rattle hitch bolt. That becomes a great little way. They are pretty standard across the industry, but you love to see them. They are gonna remove all that play, all that shake that your bike rack might have. And as you guys are gonna see, as I shake this, it actually shakes the entirety of the Tesla, which is great to see. That guy definitely doesn't wanna move. That means we're bringing it all online to one system, making for a nicer, smoother ride for ourselves, our bike rack, and of course, our bike, which bikes, which is great to see. 
Again, guys, the destination becomes a no-brainer for me. If you want to go ahead, make sure that you and your family are going to have a great time at the trails. And, of course, it becomes great for multiple friends as well. I like the versatility that the rack offers me. And, again, you can't really beat that middle mounting system to go ahead and clamp onto almost any bike out there. Now, I will say, though, um, you do have that frame uh, contact. So probably going to have to look at a front tire hold option like we mentioned before. Um, and for four-bike rack carriers, you're looking at some pretty premium, expensive items up there. Um, However, there are a lot of great two-bike systems out there, so if you're really not liking um, the frame contact and you're trying to prevent any damage to your carbon frame bike, highly recommend kind of flirting around eTrailer.com and finding the right bike rack for you. Well, guys, I think that that about does it for our look here today at the Hollywood Racks destination for bike rack carrier here on the back of our 2020 Tesla Model Y. I'm Bobby. Thank you for watching. Now we're going to go ahead and take it on our test course. First, we'll start with the slaloms. This is going to show the side to side action. It's kind of going to mimic the movements that you'll see whenever you're driving down the road normally. Now we'll have the alternating speed bumps. This is going to be more so like the uneven roads and some of that uneven terrain you might be traveling on and see how it holds up.